Hello, everybody. Welcome to All Villa, No Filler. Please like and subscribe with a capital S. Well, mm, capital S, capital H, capital I, capital T. That's probably how I would spell a description of tonight's performance against Newcastle. It's been a very, very long time since we've seen Aston Villa lose at Villa Park in the league. Close to a year which is just an incredible, incredible run with a uh, 99% winning run since then. Uh, however, tonight... Um, so, uh, first of all, I'm not sure many people are going to watch this. So, um, hi, mom. Hi, dad, if you're watching. Um, but aside from that, uh, it kind of... Before the game, um, I met up with the London Lions. We watched the game together. Uh, in uh, the Yak in Elephant and Castle in London. But it, having a conversation with one or two others within the lines and a few text messages today with a few friends, there was a general sense that not quite sure about what we were going to get from Villa. And I think that follows on from just a run of performances that looked a little bit unconvincing. Draw with Sheffield United, lose to Man United, get just get over the line against Burnley just get over the line against Middlesbrough, draw with Everton. Chelsea could have got away from us in the first half at Stamford Bridge. And tonight felt like the culmination of uh, a run of performances that haven't looked massively convincing. Um, I think where I would put this is that I think Newcastle started the game with far more intensity than Villa did. If you think back to when we beat them 3-0 back in April, one of the finest performances I've seen from a Villa team in years. Um, we totally, totally dominated them from the first second of that game. We almost scored after 30 seconds. We bullied them. We uh, outplayed them. We outfought them. We outran them, everything. But from the first minute today, it kind of felt like we were a group of players who'd just been on a beach in Dubai. It was a group of players who'd just been on the pina coladas and maybe just had one last pina colada before they went on the pitch tonight. Um, a little bit hungover, a little bit slower to things than, than usual, a little bit too casual on the ball. And with that casual, sort of casual approach um, that you could see with your own eyes, Newcastle were the opposite to that and started um, with a bit more intensity a bit more certainty about how they wanted to approach the game. Um, pressing from the front. And then as soon as that press was broken, they shifted into a 4-5-1 compact formation that they did in the second half against Man City uh, a couple of games ago. And Villa just looked a bit like they were out of ideas. And as soon as they went into that deep 4-5-1, um, there were two problems. One... Villa didn't really know how to get it into the box. And so we resorted to just lumping it in, which is bread and butter when you've got four Andre the Giants in defence. Uh, I think Dan Byrne is taller than Andre the Giant. Hulk Hogan will look at D Dan Byrne and think, I can't lift this man. I cannot get him over my shoulder. Um, you know, so uh, we kind of resorted to really poor tactics, poor thinking and... Uh, it would be a case of we'd either lump it into the box and they just had it away with ease. And then if they did, they'd then have a potential break on with somebody like Anthony Gordon running from deep, Lewis Miley running in between our fullback and our centre back. Or um, they would press us really high, man for man. We would struggle to play around it and resort to long balls forward from the goalkeeper again to DRB versus Dan Byrne. Well, who's going to win that? You know, is, is David versus Goliath only on this occasion, Goliath wins all the time, you know? Um, so uh, just just a lot of naivety, I think, and uh, an inability to react to the game in hand. You can't just have Emery telling you what to do all the time. You, sometimes you got to, as a professional player on the pitch, you got to react to the situation at hand and it just kind of felt like Newcastle had their game plan stuck to it and it worked high intensity high press um and uh, if they, if we break the press sh quick shift quickly into a 4-5-1 now on occasions villa did actually get through 
but it felt that once we did get through, we'd hesitate to shoot. Diaby had a clear opportunity to shoot, but because it was on his right foot, he wanted to shift inside, and the opportunity went. A couple of other occasions that happened uh, for different players. Um, or, you know, we'd, what would happen is that we would have, um, you know, Newcastle would be in there 4 5 1. T. Lemons would be trying to, would be occupying the space in between. And it'd be very difficult to get the ball to him. But once it did get to him, once again, it just wouldn't really click between the front three of Tielemans, Diaby, and uh, Watkins. And second half, when Zaniolo came on, Zaniolo had a pretty terrible performance. I think, you know, I'm not saying that I'm not getting at him and I'm not saying that I think he's a terrible player. I tweeted about him the other day about how I think he actually could be a very effective player for us in the second half of this season. But I just can't help but think that centrally it doesn't really work for him. And that actually he's better as a right winger, as we saw against Chelsea, and as we've seen in recent performances he's had for Villa, uh, where he's come off the bench and played out wide and been much more comfortable. And um, just centrally with his back to goal, he seems to just not quite have the the tools to cope with it. Maybe he'll prove me wrong and show that he can do it, but today was not that day. Um, Diaby, I'm feeling sorry for just because I would love to see him get a chance out on the right wing just because that's where he excelled for Leverkusen. He's played very well for us this season, but I sort of feel as that second striker playing on the right-hand side, there are occasions now where teams are just on his back all the time and not letting him turn and run at them. Um, and I think if he was on the right wing, he gets to do that more and maybe play his way back into form. It just feels... And look, I think he will do again, playing as the second striker. But uh, there are... It does feel a little bit like, I, I don't know, maybe you could put Bailey there and stick Diaby out right and just see what happens. You know, Bailey was fantastic today. Absolutely amazing. As he has been all season. He's just gone up a level. That, you know, he's gone to levels that, you know, it's like it's like me getting straight A stars in GCC. You know, that's never happening. And somehow it happened. Straight U's to straight A stars. I didn't get straight U's, straight E's. No, I didn't get straight E's. But, you know, that sort of a thing. Um, but look, uh, something else I think Newcastle did very smartly, they did not let John McGinn affect the game. Every time John McGinn got the ball back to goal, again, they were on him all the time. It was a reversal of what happened last season where McGinn bullied Dan Byrne. Dan Byrne today was not giving McGinn a second on the ball. and It, it was a struggle for him to get into it. What I would say is I thought Villa were just a little bit too casual, too casual. And, um, you know, Douglas Ruiz, I think maybe, you know, he's, he's such a fantastic football player. Today, again, I think he just looked a bit too casual with his passing. I think we looked a little bit like a Sheffield United game where it was predictable patterns of play and then resorting to just lumping it in the box when couldn't think of anything and we're going to have to react to this uh, against Sheffield United because more and more teams are going to do this to us now. More and more teams are going to do it where they sit deep or press high. And then uh, once they're deep and get the ball, somebody's going to try and run between from deep between our fullback and centre-back. Conor Gallagher did it the other day. Anthony Gordon and Lewis Miles did it today. We're going to have to deal with this. Um, that's part of being a brilliant football team that Emery's turned us into. Teams react to you and they start to prepare a game plan for you. Um, and once one team gets it right, other teams try and follow that. So fortunately, we have Professor Runa in charge. We do not have Steven Gerrard in charge. And fortunately for us, we have a fantastic manager who I think can think about this. We'll go away and stew on it. Next time we see him at a press conference, his hair will probably be like that, you know, sort of up in the air. We can be a little bit like Ace Ventura at the moment, don't I? All righty then. All righty then. Um uh, yeah, Ace Ventura, pet detective. Um, do a podcast on pets. I don't know, but um, yeah, I think uh, Emery will go away and stew on this for a while. Sheffield United. Um, I think we all know what they're going to do. Their crowd will be up for it. I'm going to it. Can't wait to go. Sheffield, a city close to my heart. Went to uni there. Um, I think that. Sheffield will do what they did to us at Villa Park. I think they'll try and emulate what Newcastle did today. 
Um, obviously, they don't have the quality of personnel that Newcastle have, um, but we just have to react. We have to figure out a way through that high press. And I would suggest Leon Bailey starting is probably one way forward. Um, one other thing from tonight, though, is that in fairness, the first 30 minutes, it was nil-nil. And it, there were patches where you kind of felt, actually, Villa are now playing their way back into this. And it's a little bit on a... It's on a it's just on an equilibrium here, isn't it? You sort of think one of the teams are going to get through. Newcastle looked the more likely with a long ball forward. They broke the high line a couple of times. And you just kind of felt they were going to get through it at some point. Um, Villa, you kind of thought maybe there could be a goal. You know, Diaby hits it first time. You never know. But uh, Newcastle looked the more threatening. and then But then to concede from a set piece the way we did was awful. It was a really bad marking for the first goal. Second goal... Again, from a set piece, bit of luck for Newcastle, but you make your own luck sometimes and you create chances and get set pieces. And then the third goal, really poor from Matty Cash, who I think actually started the game pretty well and was causing Newcastle problems. But as the game wore on, looked a bit of a liability at times, I thought, and he was that third goal was it was his fault. Gave the ball away, should have just whacked it as far back as he could to concert or to Emmy Martinez. Newcastle break and then get a and get another lucky goal. Three poor goals conceded, um, and then left it too late to really go at them. Great goal from Watkins. Great work from Bailey. Good to see Watkins on the score sheet again. Shane Watkins' is second goal was disallowed for offside marginal. And who knows if that makes it three two? But the fact of the matter is, we left it too late. Gave ourselves too much to do, and just looked a bit too casual from the start. Other teams are preparing for us better now than they did before. Professor Unai has to and will do react to it. It's a bit of a lull. We're missing Pal Torres. We missed Kamara in December. We've pushed ourselves to the absolute limits of what we can do. Uh, I think we will get back to it again. Uh, it's not easy without your best players, in particularly when you're Villa. You know, if it's Liverpool and City, you know they've got players to fall back on. Um, with us, it's you know we miss one key player and it's a big miss, but. Like I say, I think we can step up and I think we can react and I think we will. So I'm going to say we go ahead and beat Sheffield United. Let's do it. Come on, the mighty Villa. Fair play to Newcastle. I'm, I'm sure many of the Geordie fans will be watching this, loving it. You know what? They'll be having a few points tonight. Um, the the London Mags, I'm sure, will be watching this, enjoying it. But fair play. Newcastle deserve to win it. And I'm sure they'll go up the table if they can keep enough players fit. Um, but uh, yeah, bad night for Aston Villa. Let's hope, let's believe that Aston Villa will bounce back from this. Please like and subscribe up the mighty Villa. 